Hi, I'm Pastor Bob Picol, and I'm bringing to you another Wisdom Wednesday today. I'd like to talk to you about an interesting topic. Uh, I'm talking about making it through a transition. Many people I talk to are going through transitions in their life. There's always something going on. There's always change happening, and there's always improvements being taking place in people's lives. But I want to tell you something. A transition is not something that we're meant to stay in. A transition is supposed to be the process by which we get from one place to another. Problem is, too many people, they end up staying in that transition. They end up staying in that, um, in that process, but never get to the place that God has for them. Now, change is inevitable. In fact, the, philosoph the Greek philosopher Her Heraclitus said this. He said, the only thing constant is change. So if you think that you're not going to be able to change, forget it. Everybody changes. The world around us is changing constantly. We're constantly in flux. And hopefully your life is changing for the better. So, But change is not a transition. The transition is what gets us to the change. It's what takes us from where we are to where we're going. So the dictionary definition of transition is uh, the process or the instance of changing from one form to another. It's the process. It's not the destination. Too many people get into a transition and they make that their destination. So their lives are constantly in flux, but they're never getting to the place where they need to be. I run into people all the time that, you know, I, I see them every couple of years or hear from them every couple of years, and I talk to them and I say, how you doing? And they say, ah, oh, I'm in transition. And, you know, and I feel like I want to say to them, you know, guys, you're always in a transition. Why don't you do what you have to do to get to the place where God wants to take you? So the problem is that, that, that we all have these tendencies and we all have this issue. Now, turn with me in your Bibles to Deuteronomy 29, verse 5 and 6. The Israelites had the same issue. All right? The Bible is very clear about it. It says this in verse 5, Yet the Lord says, during the 40 years that I led you through the wilderness, your clothes did not wear out, nor the sandals on your feet. So check it out. 40 years he led them through the wilderness. 40 year transition from getting from being slaves in Egypt to possessing their promised land and inheriting their, uh, getting the inheritance that God has for them. He says, I led you. And that's what the transition is. The transition is God leading us to that place that he wants us to be. The word denotes movement as improving on the former. In other words, you're going from one place to a better place. It's improvement. It's supposed to be improvement, put it that way. All right. I believe that the Israelites got accustomed to being in their transition. The transition is never was never meant to take a long time. But if we get accustomed to it, if we get comfortable in it, then it's going to take a long time to get us from one place to the other. Let's look at Abraham, or Abram rather. Genesis 12.1 says, The Lord said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. Go, he says, Go from your country to the land that I will show you. If Abram stayed in, the, in his country, if he stayed in the place where he was comfortable, he would have never gotten that inheritance. He would have never been able to get the revelation from God that he was going to be the father of many nations and become Abraham, right? So, uh, you know, the problem was that, you know, if Abram stayed back there, he was a polytheist. All the people around him, you know, were pagan worship. You know, they worship pagan gods and things like that. God is saying to him, listen, I want to be your only God. I am God. I am him. And I, and I, want, to, I want to take your life and make you the father of many nations. So Abram had to leave all that behind. See, we have to leave the past behind in order to get to that transition. The transition period is the time that God uses to reveal himself and his plan. We can't look back and say, I miss the old days. We can't look back and say, I wish it was like it was way back when. 
we have to look towards the future, and we're going to see a, a verse in Philippians in just a moment that says we have to look towards the future in order to get to that, in order to get through, <coughs> excuse me, in order to get through the transition, we must long in our hearts for the new. We can't pine away for the past. We must long for the new. Philippians 3.13 says this, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining forward, right? Forgetting what is behind and straining forward or straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ. There's three things Paul talks about here. Uh, the first thing is forgetting what lies behind. The second thing is straining forward. And the third thing is pressing on. Let's look at this. Forgetting what is behind. The word forget means to neglect or no longer care about. We no longer care about what's in the past. We forget what's in the past. We're no longer bringing that to our remembrance. We're no longer dwelling on it and letting it run our lives. We're moving forward to the things that God has for, the, for, for us in the future. So forgetting what lies behind. The second thing is straining forward, stretching forward, in other words, reaching forward. You know how, um, say for instance, you drop your remote behind the couch and you want to get you, you want to find that remote. So you have to, it's just a little bit out of reach, but you know that if you strain for it, if you reach for it, if you if you just kind of hang over that couch a little bit and reach down, you'll get that. Now I know I'm using a simple uh, example, but all of us know what it's like to drop our remote behind the couch, right? So it's straining forward. It's Everything is pressing against you, but you're reaching for that goal, reaching for something that looks like it just might be a little bit out of reach. The third thing is, he says, press on. Press on. In other words, to pursue without hostility, to keep pushing, to keep going, to follow after. It, you know, Paul's transition, Paul had a transition from Saul to Paul. It only took three days. Israel's transition, the children of Israel, took 40 years. See, your transition doesn't need to take a long time. You just have to forget what's in the past, you have to strain for the, what's in the future, and you have to press on. You have to keep going. See, the church has been in transition for some time now. Some of us have been in transition for years. Nothing seems to change for us. God wants to take us to that place of change. See, 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are transformed into the same image from glory to glory, even as from the Lord, the Spirit. From glory to glory, we're being transformed. That transformation, the process of that transformation, is a transition. And we all go through it. Romans 8, 28. We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. See, the transition is part of that predestination. It's all part of God's plan. Anything that you go through in that transition, nothing takes God by surprise. He didn't have to come up with a plan to help you. It no, nothing took him by surprise. So, so let's look at some reasons why we get stuck in a transition real quickly. Number one, we look back. We look back. We're constantly looking back. We're looking to the past. We want the good old days. Trouble with the good old days is they weren't really all that good. We were always looking for a way out of it, weren't we? See, we look back. Isaiah 40 through 43, 17 says, Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? 
I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. What happens when we look behind? Well, what happens if we're, if we're walking forward and we look behind? We trip over our own two feet, right? Do you ever notice people that are walking and looking, at, looking down at their cell phone? They're not looking where they're going. They bump into people. They trip all the time. The other thing is this. Number two, they get, we get comfortable in the old. We get comfortable in the transition. Let's look at what Numbers chapter 11 verse 4 says. It says, The rabble with them began to crave other food, and again the Israelites started wailing and said, if only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt at no cost, also the cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions, and garlic. But now we have lost our appetite. We never see anything but this manna. See, they were comfortable back there. They wanted it all given to them again. See, have you gotten comfortable in your transition? Are you expecting God to bring you through, or are you just comfortable where you are? Don't look to the past. Don't get comfortable in the old. Number three reason why we stay in transition is we complain about change. Numbers 14.27 says this, How long will the, this wicked community grumble against me? I have heard the complaints of these grumbling Israelites. The word grumble, even the word itself means to remain in one place. See, and that's the problem. We, 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 when we grumble and complain about the change, we remain in one place and we can't move forward. The fourth thing is that we shift our focus to other things. It's easy to shift our focus. We lose heart. Here's what the Bible says about that. 2 Corinthians 4.16 says, Therefore we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we're wasting away, yet inwardly we're being renewed day by day. We lose heart. <clears throat> we lose heart. We lose courage. We release that 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 desire for the new, and we go and we and we keep our desire for the old in our hearts. So, how do we break through the transition? Number one, you got to remember it's temporary, and it needs to be temporary. So, so again, from that, that 2 Corinthians 4, 16, Therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we're wasting away, yet inwardly we're being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles, momentary troubles, that's the thing, are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. It lasts for a limited period of time. Who sets the limits? God does, and we do. We set the, God sets the limits with his purposes, his plans, and his revelation. We set the limits by the way we handle it. So have an expectation. Don't be satisfied. Actively pursue it. Because nobody coasts into the will of God. It doesn't just happen. You have to get there. And thirdly, anticipate. It's the verse that I read before, Isaiah 43, 19. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Perceive it. Understand it. Know it by being it. We must believe that transition is temporary and will come to a close. Let, let's allow the Lord right now to build in us that expectation, anticipation, and willingness to press on toward the goal. Do you feel like you've been in a transition for too long? Do you think it's time to get moving again? We at Lehigh Valley Worship Center, we want to help you. We want to help you make that transition. We're here to pray for you. We're here to encourage you. We're here to help you find that place in his kingdom. Join us this Sunday at Lehigh Valley Worship Center, 1555 Linwood Street, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. If you're in the Lehigh Valley area, you don't have a local church, we'd love to have you come and visit us. We're here to help you, and, and we will help you. So God has a place for you. Let's find it together. Thank you.